Hello, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're safe and well. In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, how you can find your sweet spot on your non regulated PCP air rifle. So let's roll the titles. So what do I mean by the term sweet spot? Well, the sweet spot on your rifle is the pressure range in which your muzzle velocity uh, remains the most constant. And why is that important? Well, if you're target shooting and entering competitions, you want to retain as much accuracy as possible, obviously. So in order to uh, keep your accuracy, uh, you want your muzzle velocity to stay within the narrowest band that uh, you can. So how are we going to find the sweet spot? Well, it's fairly straightforward. You shoot a number of pellets through a chronograph, recording the muzzle velocity, whilst at the same time uh, recording the drop in pressure of your rifle. So let's have a look at the setup that we're going to use. Here we are all set up inside, a bit windy outside, so it was easier to do it inside today. As you see, first off here, I've knocked up a, um, a quick uh, crib sheet that I can record the uh, shot number or the um, muzzle velocity and cylinder pressure for each shot number. Uh, I've got 150 here, but I'm probably expecting it to be around 130 shots. We're going to use the uh, the Air Arms S400 because uh, I have an unregulated version. You can see I've got my cylinder um, and the whip is plugged into the cylinder on the rifle. And then we've got our chronograph and I'm using my um, backstop box uh, to catch pellets. So first off, what we need to do is we need to charge the rifle cylinder up to 190 bars, which is the recommended uh, maximum pressure for this rifle. So let's do that. OK, so first thing we do, close pressure release valve and then we'll slowly open the valve. First up, the needle is going to catch up with the pressure that's actually in the rifle, which is just under 150 bars. Now what I'm going to do is open the cylinder a bit slower to try and charge as slowly as possible. I'm not teaching you to suck eggs, but uh, remember when you're um, if you try and blast this air through too quickly, you're just going to generate heat. Here we go, we're charging. We want to charge nice and slowly and get that needle up to 190 bars. As I say, if you generate heat, the air will expand and so you won't get a true reading because once the air in the cylinder cools down, you, the pressure will be less. So there we are, we're smack bang on 190 bars. Close the main valve, going to leave the pressure release valve closed because what we're going to do is we're going to use this gauge to measure our pressure because it's going to be more accurate than the one on the rifle. If you haven't got um, the cylinder with a gauge on it, then you can use the one on the rifle, but it's going to be a little bit more difficult to judge your pressure. So we'll leave that set up then. The next thing we need to do is set up our chronograph. And to set up our chronograph, we need to know the pellet weights. Now these are the pellets that I'm going to be using. Exact Diablo pellets, 8.44 grain, which is 0.547 grams. Now what I've done is I've just taken uh, 150 pellets straight from the tin, check them individually to make sure that there's no damaged skirts, and rather than weigh them individually, um, what I've done is I've weighed all 150 
and then divided that weight by 150 and that gives me an average pellet weight of 0.545 grams. Uh, on the tin it says 0.547 so we are two thousandth of a gram out so I don't think that's going to make much difference. Uh, that's three decimal points. The chronograph will only accept two decimal points so we're going to round that up to 0.55 there we are, the settings on the chronograph. You can see the, the ammo is set to 4.5 millimeter and 0.55 grams. So we're all set there and we're ready to go. Just one quick point to make then. I'm gonna be using a pellet for every shot. If you don't wanna use, you know, 130, 140 pellets to do this test, then you can, uh, say, put a pellet in every fifth shot. Um, and just record every fifth shot the muzzle velocity and then use the four shots in between just to reduce the uh, pressure in the cylinder. Um, that way you'll get the same sort of results but um, you won't use as many pellets. Let's make a start then. So to begin with we need to put the 190 bars pressure for the first shot. And put our first pellet in. Make sure we're lined up. Thing, Bob, and and that's seven point seven five eight point three. So that's seven five eight point three. Another one. Make sure we're lined up. Oop. Seven seven five point four. So I'll continue taking shots rather than video the whole thing, and we'll come back when the pressures drop down some, and I'll show you uh, what the drop in pressure on the gauge. So we've taken six shots. If you look over at the pressure gauge, you can see we're if it focuses in properly, which it doesn't seem to want to do. There we go. It's halfway between the 180 and the 190 mark, so we can put the pressure down as 185. So now we're going to write 185 for pressure for shot 7. Well, it's going well. We've taken 50 shots. We're already down to 155 bars, so I'm going to crack on, carry on, get down to at least uh, 100 bars and see what's happening there. Okay, so we've got down to 110 bars, and I've noticed that the muzzle velocity is starting to drop off now. Uh, we're in the low 760s, 750s, so I'm going to stop it there. And uh, and we'll look at the uh, we'll look at the results. So we have our results then, and as you can see from the sheet, the pressure drops are in the uh, right hand column are fairly consistent down the list, which is a good sign. Now what we could do is we could try and analyse these um, muzzle velocities by just looking down the column, uh, but it's a lot easier if we use them to create a graph. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next. It's probably simpler than you think. I'll show you probably the easiest way to do it. Here's how we're going to create our graph then so that we can find out what the sweet spot is for the rifle we've just tested. Now I'm going to do this using Google tools because they're free for everybody to use and they can be accessed from any different device. So you can do this on your personal computer, your laptop, a tablet, even your phone. 
So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we are logged into our Google account and then we need to type sheets.google.com and enter that. We've got my caps lock turned on. And we need to click on this blank here to start a new sheet. And this is going to create a blank spreadsheet for us. Now, don't let that put you off. Um, we're not going to do anything complicated. So I've got my sheet of results in front of me and we need to put these results in the three columns. So the first column is going to be the shop number. So the way we po populate that column, now I've got 114 shots. So I don't want to go down here typing in all the numbers to 114. So there is a shortcut. What we can do is I can put one, type one into that column, then hit the down arrow two into the next column, hit the down arrow, three, hit the down arrow, right. And then what I do is I click on uh, the top cell and, and drag down to highlight all those cells. Now, if you see this little dot here, if I put my uh, mouse cursor on there, it turns to a cross. And then I click and drag that all the way down. And I want to go down to 114. Nearly there, 113, 114, and then let go. You see that it populates all the numbers. So what I want to do now is go into column B and start typing in all of my uh, values from the chronograph. So first was 758.3. Uh, and then hit the down arrow and that'll enter that and I've got 775.4 and then 759.2 down so you get the idea there once you put in all these values then we come in and put in the values column C which are the pressure values so at the top there that would have been 190 uh, and my next reading was shot 7 so I'd go down to shot 7 put in 185 um, down arrow and complete, completely populate the uh, the table. So uh, to save you sitting here watching me putting all these figures in, um, I've already done this uh, and I've got this table here. You can see with all the figures in. Right now, one of the things that we've got to do, we're going to create a graph and uh, we're going to have the the horizontal axis is going to be the shot numbers and the vertical axis is going to be the value of uh, the muzzle velocity but we also want to try and include uh, the pressure so that we can refer to that on the same graph now the problem that we've got here is that this value is in the 700s and this value is in the hundreds okay so in order to um, make it easier to see uh, all of these figures on the same graph, what we're going to do is do a little, uh, a little bit of a fudge, and we're going to change the, the the 100 in all of the pressure values to 700. So 190 will become 790, 185 will become 785, 180 will become 780 get the idea we change all of those so uh, let's carry on down change those if you bear with me I'll change all of these values and then you can come back and we'll take a look at them Okay, so I've changed all of those values in the pressure column then. So instead of being a 1, the first figure is a 7 on all of those. Now what we need to do is to turn these into a graph. So what we're going to do is uh, click in cell 1 and drag, click and drag across and then down to highlight all of the figures. And if we run off the bottom of the page, you'll see that it will um, run down to the bottom. So we're highlighting all of those figures that we've collected 
and then we go up to the top here click on insert and we click on chart and you'll see that it's created a graph now what we're going to do now then is is I'm gonna oh let's move this up to the top of the page and I'm just clicking and dragging it to get it to the top of the page where we can line it up okay so we're at the top uh, and if I click in the bottom corner I can pull it across to the edge of the page now you can see at the moment we've got all this blank space at the bottom here so what I'm going to do now is if I click up here and click on edit the chart get the chart editor come up for this graph or chart click on customize and what we want to do is we want to change the vertical axis so click on vertical axis and we want to make the minimum axis uh, nearer the lower value that we're going to get so we will take that to we'll take that to 700 and you'll see then we can click on this at the top here and you can see we've got a better graph now one thing that you'll notice on here the blue line the blue lines are your muzzle velocity and the re little red dots are the pressures so you can see here the pressure is falling constantly as we take shots almost in a straight line which is good um, and you can see the variation in the muzzle velocity so we've got our first pressure here if I click on this and highlight that red dot that's 190 bars uh, and you'll see that shot one and then if we come down to here shot one 758.3 feet per second so we can see all the data in this graph <clears throat> so what we're looking for then is we're looking for a nice flat area you can you can see here that when we first start we're at the higher pressure 190 bars is a bit erratic and as we move along the line things settle down and then we get to around this area here and this portion of the graph is fairly constant it's quite a good I mean there's a few odd shots but it's fairly constant uh, as far as as muzzle velocity goes and then as we get to the end starts going a little bit erratic and then as the pressure in the cylinder drops the muddle, muzzle velocity starts to reduce so this area of the graph is probably what we're looking at as our sweet spot so if we look at this pressure here you can see we are 175 bars so we could seduce we could deduce from that then that an ideal um, pressure to charge the cylinder to on our rifle is 175 bars uh, to at the start of the sweet spot and then we carry on up to the end here and we've got 150 bars perhaps we can almost go to 145 bars okay so that takes us then from shot number 22 right up to shot number 66 which is if you take 22 away from 66 that's 44 shots now if you're doing an HFT course you need 30 shots for the course and probably uh, an extra 10 15 shots for and um, on the plinking range just to check your zero and uh, perhaps an extra couple of shots spare just in case there's a ceasefire and you have to um, shoot some of your pellets into the ground so that's quite a good so for this um, for the results for this rifle then I would suggest that our sweet spot is going to be between 175 bars and 140 and 145 bars 
because you can see there that we've got a fairly constant straight bit. It actually, looking at it in a graph, it actually jumps out at you. Whereas just looking at the figures on the page, it might not. So we've found our sweet spot then. And um, hopefully you'll realize that that is not too difficult to do. So we've had a look at our unregulated air rifle and seen how that performs as regards the spread of the muzzle velocity. Might be a good idea to take a look at a regulated rifle and uh, see how that compares. So we'll do that then, shall we? Just to do our comparison then with a regulated rifle, here we have a Day State Wolverine R which is fitted with a humor reg. Let's see if we can zoom in on the gauges. Do they focus? So you can see we've got about 190 bars and the reg is set just around 110 bars. So I'm just gonna do, put 10 of the same pellets that we used before through this rifle and record the results from the the chrome graph. Let's take this opportunity then to compare the results from the unregulated S400 uh, with the regulated Wolverine R. So taking the um, shots into account, putting them on our uh, on a chart here, taking the 10 shots from our sweet spot that we've discovered for our Air Arms S400 and uh, type them into this table along with the corresponding uh, uh, power foot pounds and you can see that within these 10 shots on the S400 we're getting an average mu muzzle velocity of 769.5 feet per second uh, which is an average energy of 11.1 foot pounds. Now if you take into account the difference between the highest value of that range and the lowest value you get the spread, which in this instance is a spread of 8.6 feet per second, uh, which is a very good uh, result really. Um, anything up to 10 to 15 uh, feet per second spread is a good result. So um, quite happy with that, 8.6 feet per second spread. And also I put on here, uh, thing called standard deviation which is 2.7. Um, standard deviation is useful to think about in this instance and I just want to explain just very quickly what standard deviation is so you'll hopefully understand why, why it might be important. So having a look at this uh, graph here then, we're assuming that the black line here is the average. If all of the results that create that average fall inside these red lines then our standard deviation is low because all of our results are very close to the average. If however all of our some of our results are quite a long way from the average or either lower or higher and they all fall within these green bars can you see then that your standard deviation will be higher. So it's in our best interest then uh, the more consistent that our rifle is the lower the standard deviation. So if we go back to our result then, a standard deviation of 2.7 means that all of these results are actually very close to this average, which is good. So let's have a look at the results that we got for our 10 shots from the Wolverine, which is a regulated rifle. So you can see, put all the results in here, we get an average of 771.4 feet per second which is 11.15 foot pound so you can see very similar very similar average uh, for muzzle velocity 
uh, and for energy. But in this instance, on, a, on our regulated rifle, we've got a spread of 12.1 and a standard deviation of 3.4. So you can see from this that our unregulated rifle actually performed better. Uh, we've got a smaller spread uh, and we've got a smaller standard deviation. So one of the things that we can take from this is probably um, this unregulated rifle is not necessarily going to benefit too much for, from having a regulator fitted because uh, I can't see that a regulator is going to, in, you know, e even if it improves those results, it's not going to make a substantial difference to the performance of the rifle. Um, and then we make a comparison about um, a rifle that's relatively cheap compared to a rifle that's quite expensive. So uh, the saying comes to mind, all that glitters is not gold. You know, you might convince yourself that you need a regulated rifle or you need to fit a regulator in a rifle that's currently unregulated. But when you do your sweet spot test, you can see for yourself that, no, you don't really need to do that at all. So anyway, I just thought those results were interesting. It's certainly something to think about when you think about what you're going to spend your hard-earned penny, earned pennies on anyway. So there you go. Well, that's all for this video. Hope you found it useful. If you did, then please give it a like by clicking on the thumbs up button because that will ensure that other people find the video that might find it useful and it gives me a good indication of how I'm doing as well. So until next time, see you soon. Thank you.